How many people were here last Sunday? You had the chance to listen to last Sunday's message. I was here. I was here. Um, <laughs> if you weren't here, where were you? Where were you? You know, I know a lot of people messaged me and they're out this week and and just uh, the graduations yesterday. Some people starting summer vacations and being with family and. Um, but we thank you for joining us and connecting with us today. I'm, I'm grateful for our own online, uh, our, our online church family. Are you? Yeah. Let's give them a hand and just thank them for, you know, you're, you'd be surprised that not every city around this nation has a good church. You know, I, I remember, um, and you've heard me tell this story before, but I remember being um, on uh, in, uh, in Masemara, uh in Kenya, and um, being there, and we were staying at a uh, at a resort there. We were only there for a couple of days. We had done two weeks of ministry, and at the end, we'd always go on a safari. and And we came into the morning. We went in, and there was a gentleman there. He was the concierge of this place where we we're eating lunch at the hotel. and And um, he he looks across. He goes, Pastor Bridges, Pastor Bridges. I'm like, I'm like, who's he talking to? I, I this is the first time I've been you know, here. And, and the guy goes, me and, me and my daughter, we watch you every Sunday. We watch you and Dr. Savelli every Sunday. And so it's, it's like, you never know. Well, I get emails usually about every other month from this family that watches us in Spain and we're her church family. Amen. Amen. Are you grateful for technology? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Well, last week I talked about going to the other side. And, um, and I, I brought up a statement and it said, don't look towards your future in fear. And we talked about the story of Jesus and the disciples going to the other side. Say, I'm going to the other side. And I'm not going to take time to review that. But uh, how we closed out, we talked about trust. We talked about the disciples and we talked about Jesus and we talked about living from the perspective of Jesus being at a place of peace and being at a place of rest. I mean, you either have been through a storm, you're going through a storm, or you will go through a storm. No one's exempt from going through challenging times or difficult situations. But there's two things that I see here, and uh, Pastor Annette, she's ministering to the preteens next door this morning. She didn't play hooky from church. She's, she's next door teaching the preteens. And we were driving back. We, had to, we went down south to where her mom lives, and we, we had to deal with some stuff with her and some nurses and some things like that. And we got back yesterday afternoon, and on the way back, I'd already been preparing and just seeking direction on where to go this morning. And, and I kept hearing this in my spirit as I got closer and closer and I kept hearing this in my heart and said this, Justin, you're either going to react in a situation or you're going to respond in a situation. So when the disciples and Jesus were going to the other side and they experienced a storm, you had two different things that took place. You had a group of people that reacted and you had a, group of, you had a, you had a man that responded. And you're like, well, pastor, I think, I th I think both of them are the same. They're not. I wrote down these definitions. The word react means to continue uh, is, um, hallelujah, read my own writing here. Um, it is a emotional, impulsive, influenced by fear. It's your, actually, it's your, your emotional, your impulsive, your impulsive, and you're being influenced by a situation because of fear. It's like you're not even thinking about it. You're just, you're making this response. You're reacting. You're, you're not even thinking about it, the situation. You're just acting. And because you're just reacting to something, the fear is leading you. The disciples were reacting to the storm. The disciples were reacting to the boat becoming filled with water. And so much so that they go to Jesus and have to wake Jesus up and says, Master, don't you care that we're perishing? They were reacting to a situation instead of responding. The word responding means this. It means thoughtful, 
deliberate, thoughtful, deliberate, involved consideration of a situation. And it's a way, weighing different opinions. So when I react to something, it's just I'm being influenced by fear, so my emotions are driving me. When I respond to something, it's thoughtful, and you take a moment to think and to weigh options. That's two different ways, but I can, I, but I can be honest with you. There's times I've responded in situations, and there's times I've reacted in situations. How about you? See, and how you either react or respond are going to be determined on your perspective about some things within your situation. I don't know about you, but I want to come to a place where I no longer react to the storm, but I take a step back and I respond. Because if I react, then more than likely I'm, being re I'm reacting in if I'm reacting in fear, then I'm not reacting in faith. I wrote some of these quotes down, and one of my I said last week, and these are this is something from Dr. Savell, and it says, Fear is of the devil, faith is of God, and faith is the key to everything. Let me say it again. Fear is of the devil, faith is of God, and faith is the key to everything. Dr. Savell also said this. Anyone can believe God is good when things are going well, but it takes faith to believe in his goodness when your life seems to be shattered all around you. 2024 is a year of progressing, advancing, experiencing promotion, and seeing my highest expectation fulfilled. Can we say that again? 2024 is a year of progressing, advancing, experiencing promotion, and seeing your highest expectation fulfilled. As I said last week, the enemy does not want you to progress to the other side of your storm. The enemy wants you to stay stuck in your situation. The enemy wants you to continue to react in fear to what's taking place and what's going on around you. But we need to take a step back, you know what, and we are going to respond in faith. Because faith is the key to everything. Faith is the key to have victory. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. 1 John 5, 4. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11 and... Um, So we're going to still talk about trust and Hebrews chapter 11, let's look at verse 30. It says, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. And what more shall I say for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David. Say David. David. Then it says, and Samuel and the prophets. Say and the prophets. And the prophets. Now get this, who through faith subdued kingdoms? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worked righteousness, obtained promises. We can stop there. there. It goes on and says some other things, but it was through this faith that they subdued kingdoms. They overcame kingdoms. Hallelujah. He worked righteousness and they obtained promises. Not about you, but I'm gonna obtain some promises. How about you? But how did they attain the promises? By faith. See, the promise for Jesus and the disciples, the promise was, hey, we're going to the other side. The promise was the other side. 
2024 being a year of progressing, advancing, experiencing her promotion, and seeing your highest expectation fulfilled. That is a promise that's come from God's word, and we see it throughout God's word. And say this with me, that promise is mine. So here we see David and the prophets, it said that they subdued kingdoms, they worked righteousness, and they obtained promises. Let's look at Psalms chapter 56. Psalms 56. Thank you, Father. Mm. Thank you, Father. Let's look at verse 3. It says, Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. You see, if you react, see, David is experiencing something that's causing fear. So uh, you need to, we need to understand that you're not exempt from fear. The fear is going to come. What you're walking through, and initially when that storm hits or that report comes, the first thing that's going to come is that fear. But David tells us, when I am afraid, what does it say? I will trust in you. See, that's having to take a step back instead of responding because of the fear, instead of reacting because of the fear, you're stepping back. And David's saying, when I'm afraid, I'm going to trust in you. Let, let that be your testimony of faith you, where you can say, Lord, you can say, when attacks come, I'm going to trust in you. Yes. You may be in an attack right now, um, and, and you can say, right now, Lord, I'm in an attack, but you know what? I'm going to trust in you. Say that with me. I'm going to trust in you. Verse 4 says, in God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what can flesh do to me. For the sake of time, let's look at verse eight. You number my wonderings and you put, you number my wonderings, put my tears into your bottle. Wow, I love this. To me, this is, man, the heart of the father. He knows your wonderings. He knows what's going on around you. He puts your tears in a bottle. That scripture is for some people this morning. Amen. He knows, he knows the tears you've cried over your family. He knows what you've gone through, the disappointments that you've experienced. He He cares about every tear that you've cried. You number my wonderings, you put my tears into your body bottle. Are they not in your book? Next verse says, when I cry out to you, then my enemies turn back. What's the answer to the, to, what's the, answer to the, uh, the, the, the enemy? It's crying out to him. And when I cry out to him, my enemy turns back. Amen. This I know because God is for me. This I know. David is convinced of this. This I know because God is for me. David's knowing that when he's in the middle of the storm, he knows in the very, in the, in the middle of the storm, in the middle of what he's going through, he knows that God is for me. I want you to know that God is for you. The enemy has come in to try to bring destruction to your life, but you need to know that God is for you. Then he says this. I love this. He says, this I know. What do you know about God? Believe that he is. Believe that he is. Believe that he is. In God, I will praise his word. In the Lord, I will praise his word. Hallelujah. In God, I have put my trust. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? 
Now, this is, this is David speaking, and I, I went back and I reached, I have this book called Telehim, Telehim and, it's a, and it's rabbis that did commentary on all the Psalms. And when the Psalm, when the, when the rabbis interpret this, and they, he says it th- on three different occasions in the Lord, I will praise his word. I will praise his word. And, and as I got looking, as one of the rabbis, what they did is David was reflecting on the time that he was anointed by Samuel. Here he is anointed at 16 years of age as a, as a teenager to be king, but yet all the different things that had happened to him, all the different attacks that came to him, the things that came to him personally with his family, being left out in the field while everyone else gets to uh, greet the prophet. And then you have, you have all his brothers making fun of him. You have, you have uh, uh, Saul trying to kill him. And all these different things are happening. All these things are different pl- di- taking place. And so David, he's saying, I'm going to praise his word. I'm going to pray. What did God say? What did the prophet do? The prophet anointed to be the next king. Right now, I might not be the king, but I'm going to trust in the Lord and I'm going to praise his word. I'm going to praise his word. I'm going to look to your word. I'm going to lift up your word higher than my circumstance. I'm going to lift up your word higher than my situation. Right now, I might feel horrible. Right now, I might be at a loss for words. Right now, I might not not have direction or guidance, and I'm broken on the inside. But even in spite of all that, David was able to say, even I trust in you, and I will praise your word. I'm going to praise your word. I'm going to get through this. I'm going to praise your word. Why? Because God, you are for me. God, you're for me. Hallelujah. And we could look at all the Psalms and there's times he said, God is for me. God is with me. Hallelujah. So, so David, in the midst of this, this is what a life of faith looks like. Instead of reacting in fear, in the midst of the fear, you're responding in faith. I will trust in you. Look at Isaiah 26, Isaiah 26. In in Hebrews 11, remember he talked about not just David and Samuel, but he also said, and the prophets. So what we're hearing here is is words of faith. I'm building up our faith today. As I'm ministering these messages about faith, it's, it's, it's the things that Dr. Savell established in our hearts and honoring this heritage of faith. Isaiah 26 Thank you, Father. Verse three says, you will keep him in perfect peace. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. So where does perfect peace come from? Keeping your mind stayed on him. Honestly, the last thing that, when I, if I went through attacks in my life, really the last thing I want to do is, is go to the Bible. Now, and I'm talking about now, but earlier on, but yeah. even now, it's the last thing. When, don't look at me so holy. <laughs> We're all human. We're all natural. We, we, we have to deal with these things. You have a mind and you have a soul that will try to lead you away from the word of God. You, you'll have a soul that's going to try, try to control you. But when you are founded in the word, your, your hope is an anchor to your soul. Yes, sir. That's what Hebrews says. That's good, that's good. So, so it's, it's when you're going through this, even when you don't feel like it, I got to keep my mind yes. stayed on him. Yes. Perfect peace. Now, it's not just keeping your mind stayed on him. This, he's still writing here. You will, have, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Why? Because he trusts in you. We talked about that last week, the difference between belief and trust. Because he trusts in you. Verse four says, trust in the Lord forever. For in Yah, the Lord is everlasting strength. Trust in the Lord forever for Yah is everlasting strength. Let's go to Psalms chapter 9. Psalms 9. Hallelujah. 
I'm progressing. I'm advancing. Hallelujah. I'm experiencing promotion. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. I learned this from Dr. Savell in, in uh, our correspondence school that we have. And uh, learned actually learned it also when I went to his Bible school. And if you want more information on that, you can go to jsmi.org and, and get more information about our correspondence school that we have. But in the first course, it's called Developing a Passion for God. And in, cha- in Lesson 5, he talks about, he talks about um, transition. Transition. Transition is usually never comfortable. Transition, a lot of change is not fun. But well, something I learned from Dr. Savell is, is transition is always a key to promotion. And that's, that's for some people in here. You're in a season of promotion. And, and for some people in here, you're in the midst of transition. You don't know why you're in transition. But what, what the Holy Spirit wants to know is that you were comfortable with where you are and you wouldn't have changed anything because you're so loyal. But transition has taken place because it's your season of promotion. It's your season of promotion. Hallelujah. You receive that. I receive that. Psalms 9. Verse 1 says, I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Let's go down to verse 9. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed. Hmm. If you're oppressed this morning, he's your refuge. A refuge in times of trouble. Wow. Wow. Run to him, run to him, run to him. Verse 10, and those who know your name, thank you, Father. Now get this, and those who know your name will put their trust in you. Those who know his name, let me ask you a question, do you know him today? Not just do you know about him, Do you know him? Faith is established in knowing him. If you don't, see, trust is relational. Trust is relational. If 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 right now you you you're If, if my trust level is, weak, is weakened, then the issue is my relationship is probably not where it should be. Because trust is relational. I have a relationship with Pastor Annette and I trust Pastor Annette because of that relationship. So there's a lot of people that know God in name but are you, in a, are you in a relationship with God where you are continuing to discover who he is? Because it's in the relationship that I'm establishing with God that my trust level raises. And I always use it this way. In Peter, it talks about that grace in peace is multiplied to you according to your knowledge of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. So I can pray for peace and I can pray for grace all day long, but my grace and peace will only rise to my level of knowledge. If your knowledge of God is here, then that's the only grace and peace you can operate in is up to this level. Because grace and peace is reflected. Grace and peace are a result of my position of faith in my heart. Look at Romans chapter 15, verse 13. That, that, that peace, that joy and peace and grace, all those things are a direct product of my faith and my trust in him. So each one of us, we need to continue to go on this journey of continuing to discover who he is because it's in that, those that know his name. Now that's not just knowing how to say his name. 
That's not just saying I know how to say Hashem or I know how to say Yahweh or I know how to say those things. But the thing is, do you know the person? You could say in the name of Jesus all day long, but until you know him and until you know what is in that name and what, what is obtained in that name, all we're doing is just saying words. Is those that know his name will trust in him. Let's look at Exodus chapter six. Exodus chapter six. You're so quiet this morning. You're just, just listening intently, right? Mm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. There's so much here. Whew. Hallelujah. Let's look at verse one. It says, then the Lord said to Moses, now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. For the strong hand, he will let them go. Hallelujah. I'm grateful for his strong hand. Hallelujah. And with a strong hand, he will drive them out of his land. Verse 2, and God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. Now, now listen to this. Now, he appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as God Almighty. You could say Elohim. You could say El Shaddai. The word El, you say Elohim or El Shaddai. The word El is all-powerful. The word El means sovereign. It means needing nothing else to exist. It's complete power. It's perfect power in perfect control. That's what L is. That's, that's L is, is where is really our word for God. That when you add other words on the other side of that, like Elohim, the word Ahim means, it actually is one, it's, it's plural. Meaning, meaning in this Elohim, in this name of God, there's many aspects of God. He can't be defined to just one understanding, one name. So when you say Elohim, you're not just talking about the creator of all things, but you're talking about someone that is more than just a creator of all things. He's Elohim. He's plural. El Shaddai, which the many-breasted one, you could say the one that's more than enough. God Almighty. And so here he, he, he said, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob just knew me knew me as God Almighty. But by my name, it says, hallelujah. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob as God Almighty, but by my name, Lord, I was not, not known to them. Wow. So I think Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob just had a a, a uh, one aspect of understanding of who God is. Genesis 17 says, walk before me and be thou perfect. I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be thou perfect. God was the creator. He was going to want to bring the seed to pass, the promised seed to pass. He's the creator of all things. But yet here he says, but they didn't know me by Lord, meaning Jehovah. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob just knew me as Elohim, as God Almighty, but I'm going to reveal myself to you in a different way, Moses. I'm going to open up your understanding in a, in a new way, in a new understanding. I, I'm going to see, 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 Jehovah is not just what God can do, but now, now Jehovah is all about his relationship with humanity. The first place we actually see Jehovah used is actually in Genesis chapter 2, verse 14, which Moses writes, writes the, the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. And the first time Jehovah is used is actually in, in Genesis chapter 2. Why? Because it's in his creation with man, so it's always in a relationship with man. So when you see Je Jehovah, is God wanting to get involved with you? Yes, personally. Thank you. 
And so that's what Jehovah is all about. So, so Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob just knew me to this. And, and I, I know each one of us are in different levels with our walk with God, but I want you to know that he wants you to know him more than what you know him now. He wants you to discover more about him now than you knew him, knew him a year ago. He, he wants that, see that revelation on the inside, a revelation that comes out of his word is progressive and it takes us from faith to faith and glory to glory. My trust level in God is, is built on a stronger foundation and higher now than it was 31 years ago. Why? Because I know him more now than I did in January of 1991, 93. So he's Abraham and I, Isaac and Jacob just knew me as this, but by the name Jehovah, I was not known to them. You see, when we talk about Elohim, we're talking about power and we're talking about ability. So I want you to hear this this morning because this is the title for today is that he can and he will. You see, there was a shift taking place as up to this time is they knew how powerful God was and how powerful God is. But now when you said Jehovah, now it's like it, it takes it to another level of understanding. Let's, let's read, keep reading here. But by my name, Lord, I was not known to them. I've also established my covenant with them. You see, God wants to be involved with you. See, Jehovah wants to cut a covenant with you. He cut a covenant with humanity and he swore by himself because there was no greater name to swear by. Hallelujah. I've also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan and the land of their pilgrimage in which they were strangers and I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel whom the Egyptians keep in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. So, so the Egyptians were keeping them in bondage, but what did God say? I remember my covenant. Right now, you need to know the enemy is always gonna try to keep you in bondage. That's what Egyptian, Egypt represents. It represents the world system and he wants the, he wants the, the, the people of our, of our world to be controlled and kept in bondage by the world system. But God doesn't want us in bondage to anyone, anything. And so here they are in bondage and they're being controlled by fear. They're living in fear, but yet they cried out to God. Verse six, therefore say to the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I declare over you today that he is Jehovah over your life. He's Jehovah. He is the Lord over your life. Now, let, let, I want to see you to see a connection here because when we talk about this name Elohim, we're talking about all powerful. But now when we're talking about Jehovah, we're talking about getting involved with man. So let's see how the, the vocabulary shifts here. I am the Lord. Now get this. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will. Say, I will. I will. See, this is, this is God revealing himself to Moses, Jehovah. And, and Moses knew that God was all powerful, but now he wants him to know him as Jehovah. And it's not just what God can do, but it's what will, God will do. Yeah. And you're going to see this seven different times, I believe. I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rescue from their bondage. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. I will take you as my people. I will be your God. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God who brings you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you into the land which I swore to give you. So not only can he bring them out of bondage, but now God is saying to Moses, I will do this, I will do that, I will do this, I will do that, I will do this, I will do that, I will do this. And I've learned this from Dr. Savell years ago, and he would, he, would, he, would, he would compare this story, and he would say, he would talk about his daughters, and, and he would say, I would rather my daughters 
doubt my ability instead of doubting my willingness. Think about that for a moment. As, as, as a parent, I would rather my four children or grandchildren I doubt, I doubt my ability to do something for them instead of doubting my willingness to do something for them. Amen. God wants you to know that not only can he do something, but he wants to do it. Yes, yes. Amen. He will do it. Hallelujah. He will do it. Will. Hallelujah. So when I'm in the middle of the storm, when I'm in the midst of the storm, it's not the time to react in fear, but it's the time to respond. But how do I respond? Remember, it's a, I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's, a, it's this decision. I'm weighing options, and what am I doing? God, you're all powerful. Yes. Yeah. You have the ability to do something. Oh, but Lord, but now as I meditate and I, I get to know, I know his name. So this, David said, those that know his name will put their trust in him. Oh, I know your name. You're not just a God that can perform great things, but you're a God that will do great things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus stood up and said, peace be still. Why? Because on the inside of him, he knew the Father. And he knew God couldn't just have the power to calm the storm, but he knew that God will calm the storm when he released his faith. Jesus is the exact... Colossians 1, 15 says that Jesus is the visible representation of the invisible. Hebrews 1 tells us that Jesus is the express image of the glory of God. So if you want to see how God responds in a situation, look at Jesus. Look at the life and ministry of Jesus and take what you're going through and what you're walking through and look at the ministry of Jesus and say, wait a minute, Jesus is the representation of the Father. So if Jesus did it for them, that means the Father would do it for them. And if Jesus did it for them, then Jesus will do it for me. And I, and I could pull out several stories, and some of you heard me minister this before, but, but the story I love concerning this is in, in Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, he's, he's, he's just finishing the Sermon on the Mount, and he's, he's coming out, and these people are coming to him, and this man with leprosy comes to him. This man of leprosy comes to him, and he, and he, and he comes to him, and he's approaching him, and the, and the man with leprosy, it says he bows down and he worships him. But what does he worship him for? He says this, I know that you can heal me. I know that you have ability to heal me if you're willing. See, a lot of times we can come to God because we have, we've been taught this thing, well, nobody knows what God will do. Well, I know what God can do based on his word. He's given me his word. God didn't say, oh, well, man with leprosy, I don't, know about, I don't know about this. Let me pray for a moment. What did, what did Jesus respond with? He said, I will. So the, one, uh, per, says, he goes, it's not a question whether I can or not. That's what really what he was saying, but, but will you do this? And Jesus, I will. And that word will in the Greek is the word thelo. And this speaks of love and it speaks of desire. And this is in my, in my study, the tools that I use, this is how it describes this word. It's what I like to do. It's what I like to do. Say that with me. It's what I like to do. To do. So when Jesus responded to the man with leprosy, when he said, I will, Jesus was saying, It's what I like to do. 
It's what I like to do. He finishes this story and he, and he has the centurion comes to him and he, and he says, my servant is home and, and my servant is back there sick. He goes, he goes, he goes I, 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 I don't, you know, I'm a man of authority. I understand authority. And he goes, uh, he goes, just speak the word only and my servant would be healed. What was Jesus' response? I will. Jesus saying, it's what I like to do. It's why I'm here. It's what I came for. Jesus was express image of the, our Father God. Not only can he do something about what you're walking through, he will do something about what you're walking through. You just have to stay hooked up with him. You stay, stay hooked up to the word. Hallelujah. Stay, stay keep your mind, your, your mind stayed on him. Perfect peace have they who keep their mind stayed on him and those that trust in him. You have time for one more scripture? Let's go to Psalms 37. Hallelujah. Psalms 37. We started talking about, a little bit talking about David's faith. Maybe two more scriptures. <laughs> David, David was all about leaving you and I a heritage of faith. Psalms 37. Thank you, Father. For sake of time, let's look at verse 3. It says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in Jehovah and what he shall. If you know anything about the English language, she, shall can be will. If something shall, it will. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in Jehovah. And what do we see immediately after that? He will, he shall give you the desires of your heart. You see the connection of the Lord and what he'll do, what he shall do. He shall do this. He will do this. Verse Verse five, commit your way to the Lord, to Jehovah. Trust also in him and what he shall bring it to pass. You see that? Commit your way unto Jehovah. Trust also in him and he will bring it to pass. Then it says this, verse six, he shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of evildoers who prosper in the way because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret if only comes harm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. But those who wait on Jehovah, what? They shall inherit the earth. They will inherit the earth. So we have these waiting on the Lord, committing my way to the Lord, delighting in the Lord. What happened? And then what happens? He responds. He responds. Hallelujah. For yet a little while and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place, but it shall be no more. Hallelujah. See, the enemies try to attack you and the enemies are surrounding you, but I declare of you, declare of you, there's coming a time you will see that enemy no more. Amen. You'll see that enemy no more. Yes, sir. Because you'll look for you'll look for the enemy carefully. <laughs> but will be no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves what? In the abundance of peace. Hallelujah. I speak peace over your storm right now. I speak peace over what you're walking through. Stand to your feet.